it, there could be many different reasons, Mike. But I suppose rather than put the doom and gloom merchants saying, oh, it might start going back up again, let's embrace what the date is kind of showing, Mike. So, mm. so if you look at what's gone on the last uh, several months, it, it all started in the northwest, this Delta variant, which we, we were talking about the Indian variant. And then a virus does what a virus normally does. It mm. spreads across the country. And if you look across England, Wales, Scotland now, uh, in, in Great Britain, the virus is practically everywhere now. So it, there comes a point where it can't continue to grow. So let me just explain what I mean by this. So if you think that cases will continue to rise say, in England, because if they concentrated in the northwest, you might then see that cases in the northwest remain flat. But if the virus then goes to the northeast, to mm. Yorkshire, mm. to the Midlands, then the overall England cases will keep going up and people will start thinking, well, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Right. But it's just, as I say, it's because the virus spreads out. With the virus now being all over the country and the rates are still highest up in the north and lowest down in London and, and kind of the southeast, with the right, with the kind of the virus spreading everywhere, there reaches a time, Mike, where it can't continue to go any grow any further because right. it's already infected everywhere. So, so there may well be a factor with regards to the schools, but with the schools closing, there's less chance for the virus to spread. We had the Euros as well, Mike. The, the most important thing is the age groups of what's going on here. Mm. We saw this mass rise in younger people. That is easing off now. And I think we should embrace the good news rather than have all this doom, gloom, or things are going to go back up again. Right. Let's follow the data. Let's not start scaring people to say, well, oh, but what I find news. interesting, Jamie, is that whenever there is a rise um, and, a, and, a, and a trend sort of upwards in a number of infections, what you don't get is people saying, well, this could be because of this reason or it could be because of that reason or maybe we're testing too many people. You never hear anybody kind of allowing for the purposes of a, of a rise, which could be temporary, but they're always interested in talking about a fall, which could be temporary. That That's true, Mike. And, and part of what we've seen over the last few months, we saw it before Christmas as well, is you get this surge testing and you start picking up kind of cases, whether or not these are real infections, whether or not people are actually ill or not, is another discussion, I suppose, because we have seen increases in testing. That then does lead to increases in cases. And if you then get a, a decrease in testing, it's not like blaming and saying, oh, well, we get a decrease in testing, which is why we get a reduction in cases. Some people will say, that you get a decrease in testing as well because fewer people are going forward because they're ill as well. So yeah. you can't infer just because testing's going down that cases, you know, things might start going back up again. Right. I think there's some really good stuff in the data at the moment, Mike. We're not, we remember if we are peaking, we will be more clear in the next week or so on this. It's probably too early to tell whether or not the opening of England is going to have any effect if it's starting going back up again. We mm. probably had the first weekend of, say, young people going out clubbing and, and, and the like over the, over the weekend. But I don't think... There's been a mass difference. My, you're in England. I'm in Wales, where we still haven't got the kind of all the restrictions over there. But you're probably out and about. I don't think we've seen a mass explosion of everything's different last Monday than not what was particularly. Last Sunday. I mean, Latitude was on this weekend, which I suppose some would say could be uh, some kind of an event which causes uh, numbers to go up again. But I've always said, Jamie, and I think you've agreed with me that you know, of course, numbers will go up and down depending on what people do. You know, it's a bit like the R rate. The R rate would go up because more freedoms were granted to people, and that was part of the model. So therefore, that's going to happen the same way that I'm surprised people aren't now saying, well, it's obviously uh, going down because so many people are self-isolating. Nobody's used that one yet, but I expect it will come this week. Well, we've, we've talked, Mike, about the self-isolating and Julia, obviously, self-isolating at home. With mad. These, these mad rules. There's just absolute madness with the rules here, Mike. But remember now, if we are going to have an opening of the country, this is the best time to do it. You can't have an outdoor festival in the middle of winter. Mm. So if we didn't go for Freedom Day last week and Wales looking to follow in Scotland in early August, we were going to be waiting around until next year with regards to all of this. So so one of the, I think the more important thing that we're seeing in the data the last few uh, few days as well, Mike, is younger people cases are coming down, but more importantly, kind of there's always a lag between older people catching the virus. We haven't seen the relationship between older people catching it in relation to younger people in the past. That'll be a vaccine effect. Mm. And the rates in older people are starting to kind of level off as well, which is good because it's generally the older people who will lead to the hospitalization. So we might start seeing hospitalizations. But again, we've spoken before, Mike, they're a fraction of what they were in the winter. They might start coming down and deaths are clearly nowhere near what they were when we had the relationship no. before as well. And, and what we know presumably as well about the hospitalizations, is at least 40 percent of the people in hospital um, are people who have not been vaccinated at all. Uh, it could be as high as 60% in some places. So, you know, the bottom line is that if you are uh, somebody who is not terribly old, somebody who doesn't have terribly large numbers of, of uh, comorbidities, you know, you're not likely to end up in hospital, um, whether you've had the vaccine or not, are you? No, and then the other thing as well, Mike, is many people are going into 
hospital and catching COVID and they're even continuing to happen. This is, and we still don't know. And the government hasn't published the data on this. There was talk about a few months about doing this, that how many of you people are going in hospital because of COVID rather than they've gone into hospital for some yes. elective surgery. Well, that's an, I saw that figure at the weekend. The I saw that figure at the weekend where, where, where in some hospitals it's as high as 40% of people who have, who have been marked as having COVID in hospital did not go in with it. No, and, and that's, a, you know, if you're talking about government policy, and this is all over the news every day, Mike, that is the big issue with the data. Mm. I think the, the latest thing I was hearing on the news this morning as well is kind of the vaccination. So if you just look at the vaccination rates, which is in the younger people, it's about 60% of kind of 18 to 24 year olds and uh, and 25 to 29 year olds, 60% of them have had that first dose of the vaccine now. And it's up to about 90% for some of the older age groups. What the government's worried about, Mike, is the, is the rate of the growth. So mm. it's only gone up 5% in the last two weeks. And when you look at the older age groups, when they were around 60%, it would go up 5% in about one day. So I think they're now talking about you can't go to university unless you've got a vaccine. This is just going absolutely mad. Yeah. With regards well, to I wonder about this. I mean, John Rental, who, who I don't always agree with on many things, even he said he doesn't believe that they will bring these things in. He thinks it's all about trying to persuade younger people to get the vaccine. And when they don't bother, because inevitably a lot of them just say, well, we're not going to do it. Uh, they'll just give up on it because I don't see how they can make you do that. I don't see how they can make you do it to go to a nightclub. I don't see how they can make you do it to go to a football match. None of it makes any sense, really. And they also, I mean, vaccine passports, even the Labour Party have now said they're going to vote against it. So it's not going to get through Parliament. No, I don't see it getting through Parliament. Wales have said they're not going to introduce them. Nicola Sturgeon, I think, has been a bit quiet. I haven't heard anything about from what she, her situation is on this. So you can't also like have a policy where... You need a vaccine passport to watch, I don't know, Bristol City. Right. But you don't need one to watch Cardiff in the in the away match when you're <laughs> over the border. It's just bonkers. And the other thing, Mike, are we expecting people, because you remember, if you think of London, the amount of tourists that come into London, go into restaurants, are we expecting businesses to start looking at the, the Polish app? Or well, this is the, the thing. App? This is the what, thing. What, I mean, I said this last week about Italy, because apparently in Italy now you have to show that you've got two vaccines in order to go inside a cafe, right? So what happens if you go there from here? Are you, does that mean you can't go in anywhere? Well, that, that's what's not being thought through with all of this, Mike. And people are talking about, well, the EU are going to have an app for the whole of the European Union. Mm. But what about tourists that are coming in from the Far East, from America? Mm. There's so many different countries. And we're not going to have one worldwide app with all the vaccine data in there because all the data protection rules. And the other thing I, I'm concerned about with these vaccine passports, Mike, as well, is this, this personal data with the Data Protection Act, etc. Mm. You're starting to give information to businesses, which is quite sensitive. Yeah. And if you if you say that you know if if you can't go to a university lecture for whatever reason because you haven't been double jabbed as well, people are going to start thinking, oh, you're an anti vaxxer right. There could be many reasons why you're not having them. So they haven't really thought this through. I'm, I'm totally in your camp, Mike. Yeah. It's probably kind of let's nudge them to try and get the vaccines yeah, in. I think but so. Whether or not it will actually happen is another. Because thing. exactly, I mean, also who knows whether or not some of these businesses wouldn't harvest that data and flog it to somebody. Exactly. And, and, and thing, one of the things with, with data protection, Mike, medical information is that the more extreme sensitivity things where you've got extra protections, but just giving everybody information that, you know, Joe Bloggs has got a vaccine because they've had a vaccine passport. This person hasn't. I just think we're starting to put the burden on business. We, you know, we've, we've had too much burden on business with all of the NHS track and trace. This is another thing that's going to put a burden on business. And I just can't see it working, Mike, with mm. regards to all these foreigners coming in rightly so for the economy and keeping it going and uh, is the person from sweden double vaccinated you're just going to get a lot of forgeries mm. going on it just seems to be what well, and hadn't been thought through very well mike no i think you're absolutely right jamie thank you very much indeed